Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. Okay, let's go to the question instantly because I know all of you are dying. What my take on this will be? It is I'm dying as well. So uh, the question comes from uh, Glenn Nar Nar Nargento. Nargento. Um, I don't know. Sorry. The question is: If Patriarch Bartholomew signs the union with Rome, do the Greeks have to automatically stop attending the liturgy at their Greek church, or will it depend on whether the parish priest agrees with the union? Supposedly, there is going to be a synod in Nicaea in uh, 2025 that might result in union. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, honestly, ever since I became Orthodox, by, by that I mean practicing Orthodox, I was baptized way before, in like, I don't know, 2001, for example, or 2003, I, I don't remember precisely. I've been hearing uh, that this union will be signed next year, next year, next year, and especially when uh, Orthodox and Catholic um, Easter's collide, then especially then. They're going to do it this year. Um, they're going to sign the union with the Catholics is the Orthodox version of the rapture. Uh, it's going to happen this year, I know it, and it never does. Why? Because... Uh, it, <laughs> because there's so much opposition to it and nobody's really buying it, you know? So, uh, I do have my serious doubts that it will happen next year, but I'll humor you and, uh, le let's assume that it does happen. Now, this is something that needs to be done practically by the whole church, because if a part of, uh, a part of, uh, the church does it, uh, not in agreement with the rest of it, it will fall off because essentially that part will become a variant of Eastern Catholics uh, because the church cannot lend leg legitimacy, leg um, can't make it legit, I can't remember the word in English, uh, how to pronounce it exactly, uh, uh, by simply tolerating uh, a, a part of church freely concelebrating uh, uh, the sacraments with the Roman Catholics. So. Let us assume there is this synod where this union is signed that it does not have an uh, ecumenical character, at least from the Orthodox side. So only Greeks signed the union. Okay, first step, read those documents. Uh, does, is this union in truth? Does this repudiate the filioque? Does it say directly that the spirit does not proceed in eternity from the sun. If it doesn't, and be aware that even if it's signed in truth, there will be some muddling of the waters to basically say, uh, well, you know, we're sort of agree, but, but uh, it does not proceed eternally from the sun right now, or something along the lines of that. Uh, then I would say you can still, you know, commune because it will essentially mean that the Catholics are repudiating their own position. However, it does not have to mean that Catholics are repudiating their position. It just might mean that they're, you know, oh, we put that on the paper. But yeah, he totally proceeds eternally from the Father and the Son as shown by our official catechism. You know, I, I usually would consider the catechism to be the, the expression of faith in the Roman Catholic Church. And if they don't change anything there, where they do say that the spirit proceeds simultaneously from, from the father and the son, then no, that such union is in falsehood and us Orthodox need to, uh, need to uh, you know, reject it. So let us say that such a union is signed. What are you supposed to do? Okay, you have checked the documents. It's, it is a falsehood. Should you stop attending your own church? And my opinion here is yes, uh, because uh, in that case, you would essentially, uh, basically, th those are no longer Orthodox Christians, they're Eastern Catholics. And they might say, "How my, oh, but we do not profess the filioque. Yes, but you're in union with the church that does. So you are essentially saying this is not a big deal. And if you're saying it's not a big deal, you're an Eastern Catholic. Uh, I One of my pet peeves is when I s see people on my channel uh, saying, oh, we're Eastern Catholic, we're Orthodox in union with Rome. No, that means you're a Catholic because you uh, 
you might not accept their dogmas that us orthodoxy is heretical, but you see them as not a big deal, and they are a big deal. I can see some of their teachings being sort of delegated to a level of telolugemon, or whatever the word is, you know, a sort of an optional belief, but or, uh, Catholics are sort of big on having these teachings that they proclaim directly as dogmas, the Immaculate Conception, uh, the Purgatory, Filioque, and so on and so forth. So what should you do? Uh, I personally believe that in such an extreme case, that it does happen, uh, you need to notify your priest that uh, if this goes forward, you will stop attending their church, you will stop donating them uh, money, you will stop, you know, praying with them, because they need to know that people are opposing this, you know, and you need, uh, you need to list your reasons, you need to listen to the priest's reasons, uh, if he, for example, supports it, you need to listen to his reasons, because you might be wrong, because maybe it is a union in truth, again, very doubtful, <laughs> I do not have uh, such high hopes for it, but Again, you never know. You need to notify the priest. However, if the bishop of the priest opposes this union, you are free to attend that church because that bishop is basically uh, still your sort of conduit to grace. There is a bit of a gray area, and honestly, I do not know. I didn't really check what was the situation in Constantinople after the councils of uh, Florence and Basel. Um, what if the priest opposes the union, but the bishop doesn't? Um, I think it's a bit of a gray area. I, uh, because basically priests are uh, representatives of their bishops. They do not have a power of their own, so to speak, to consecrate uh, the elements, to call upon the Holy Spirit. And that is why I have such a huge opposition to bishopless priests, because they're, you know, they can only receive the grace if they're joined by a bishop, you know. And if they don't, well, you know, they're basically in a limbo. They, they are priests, but their priesthood is completely ineffective for anything. Uh, and in such a case, um, I think you, you could and should support such a priest in such a difficult time, but still not attend his services um, uh, until the situation with his bishop is regulated this way or the other. Um, and of, um, I th that is what I would do, personally. Uh, of course, I'm open to being, you know, corrected on this, but uh, we have example from church history, and uh, that is uh, when we had the Unia in Ukraine, uh, when we had that uh, false council of Florence, where um, basically the Eastern bishops essentially said, oh, all these heresies are not a big deal. Uh, no, we have to have a direct repudiation of these heresies. Um, I hope I was of some use to you. May the Lord never put us in this situation. Again, I have very high doubts that this will happen next year because uh, I recall, I, I think, like five prior uh, Easter's that were celebrated on the same date by Catholics and Orthodox and none of them resulted in union, I don't think why this next uh, Pascha would be so different. So there's that. Uh, remember to subscribe if you want to support the channel. Uh, you can check out the links. Uh, we have Patreon, Ko-fi, Subscribestar, and if you want to have some Bible Illustrated merch, we have that too. Uh, I hope I have some use to you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!